How about, I know I haven't called him Jared Rogers yet, right? No. Okay, Jared Rogers. <coughs> How will I prevent private prisons uh, yes. from incarcerating more of the state's young black men? Yes. Gotta go. All right, man. Thanks for coming. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, Jared. So, Jared. I think I think the answer is a complicated answer, Jared. So, I'll try to give it to you in just a few minutes. Um, I don't think the problem of high rates of incarceration of anybody and African American males. Uh, to be included, has to do with the debate around private versus public prisons. No. I think it has to do with, I don't think that it does. Some of y'all may disagree with me, that's fine, that's fine. Uh, I think it has to do with a lot of other factors. Perhaps the biggest factor, as I've studied this issue, is the power of our education system and the results that we produce. And so if you look at the results, if you look at the results of the places that have the highest crime, it also has the lowest proficiency levels in reading and math. So, as an example, uh, my friend from Michigan said, my friend from Michigan up here talked about the state of schools uh, throughout the state of Michigan, but specifically in Detroit, where in Detroit the average uh, African American student in reading has a 9% proficiency. The average white student in Detroit has a 13% proficiency, and Hispanic to 12 and a half percent proficiency. The numbers in Philadelphia and Chicago, which we've all seen a lot of on the news, are almost as bad as Detroit. So the reality of it is, those numbers early on have a straight up correlation with the incarcerated population. To confirm that, I of course did the research on that, but I also decided to go into the state prisons myself to take a look at who's incarcerated and why. I spent several hours at two prisons here in South Carolina to make sure that I not only had an understanding of the statistics around incarceration, but that I also had an appreciation for what the person who is incarcerated says about why they're incarcerated. Interesting stuff. Three primary takeaways. Number one is um, single parent housing seem to play a, uh, the folks who are incarcerated are disproportionately from single parent households like, like me. Uh, number two, uh, living in poverty. And then number three is either functionally illiterate or very close from an educational standpoint. Those numbers reflected in these major statistics seem to create this, what we've heard several times, pipeline to prison. Yes. And so, my passion for education is to drive a wedge and then hopefully snap that pipeline to prison so that we have an opportunity to have more folks experiencing their full potential. So the numbers that are around crime do not indicate that the biggest problem private versus public, though. But what's the I ethics the, of private my, my, companies my, my, making my, my, money off of print, off of? I mean, it's the ethics question. They have human rights violations. So, here's what I would suggest, is that we should just go to the next question in a second, but the fact of the matter is that, as I was getting ready to say, that the uh, new interest in this public versus private has to do with actions from the Attorney General's office that suggest that, as opposed to the Obama administration, which was looking for ways to push back, the new administration is going to study the issue again. So that's probably a part of the genesis of this question. So let's, let's go to let's go to let's go to let's go all right, let's see. Okay, 
Okay. So, 